when CPR was being performed on Phil, I just, I think I was just in total shock. Um, never seen anything happen like that before. There'd been no pain. It was just completely out of the blue. Um, and I just sat there looking at him, thinking he's got to live, he's got to live. We go back to the opening ceremony of the Rugby World Cup in 2015. Uh, we left and uh, made our way across to the bus to take us back to the park and ride. Uh, we got on the bus and that's the last I knew about it. Uh, it was probably about a month afterwards that I actually did the course. It was quite enlightening really that you can make such a difference by just doing something relatively simple. Um, and the trainer that um, taught us, there was a group of us, said, um, you, you know, you can't kill a dead person. Always give CPR a go because if you don't, then they've got no chance at all. I mean, the early CPR on both occasions made a world of difference. Uh, when I spoke to the consultant after the first occasion, he said to me that had the doctor and uh, his wife not performed CPR, uh, they had uh, grave uh, fears that I would have suffered some element of uh, brain injury. Obviously, uh, having benefited on two occasions, I'm fully supportive of anything which encourages people uh, at all levels, from schools upwards, to learn CPR, because you just do not know where you will be at any point in time where it can make a difference to somebody's life. The, the more people that know how to perform CPR and can give it a go, however scared they might be, you've got the chance of saving somebody's life. Um, and in Phil's case, you know, people have saved it twice.